So every guy stepped up. All those Gilmer guys were all first coach cuts. And another guy stepped up to make shots and make key plays. Uh, but on the flip side, we defended well. We defended the most and had a half court press. But we didn't sit their defense rebounds up. And anytime you give up 24 uh, offensive rebounds, you know, it could be a long night. But for us to give up 24 offensive rebounds, still be in the game as close as we, as we were with the one possession game with uh, 36 seconds left. And let's be frank about this team. This team is growing. One thing you just alluded, minor things as far as attention to detail and doing the little things to uh, to finish the game. I think we're getting good shape. And, you know, we want to keep playing our best basketball come Thursday night. And is there another road test you got to worry about coming up against Central High and Cape Moran and, and, and Coach Moyer down there? Just talk a little bit about your ball club coming up. Uh, you know, first and foremost, you know, Coach Peyton Moyer does a great job. He's been doing this for a long time. You know, uh, he's really taking care of this guy and myself. I'm his main partner, the, the godfather and our uncle and our uncle Paige. Uh, but he, he does a great job here, and he has a lot of talented kids. He finished healthy. I know Quasi was injured their last outing, but he has a lot of versatile kids out there. They can play multiple positions, and they're dangerous. I mean, he has four guys that are in double-figure scoring. He has a young man that uh, had two, two guys that career highs the last game. They're playing really well. You know, the ODAC is tough basketball. The uh, ODAC, they're looking for searching for ODAC wins. We're searching for ODAC wins as well. And uh, it should be an interesting ball game. But we know we're going to have our hands full with Quasi, who's, I think, the best scorer in the conference. Quasi well, scores in so many. And Rick Seidel, Jerry Austin, rejoining you here as we turn our attention quickly to the Maroons, Jerry. And this is a ball club that will welcome back its leading scorer, Quasi and Passage, really missed him the other day. Well, they did. They missed his, his leadership as much as anything on the floor and his speed and quickness out there against a team from St. Mary's that was very talented, and they had a lot of guys that could dribble and penetrate and get to the basket. So uh, it looks like he's moving well out there today, and, and hopefully it's just it's a little minor setback, and he looks to be full, full steam. And we're going to go right to our interview with Coach Paige Moyer right now as we move along in the pregame. And welcome back. I'm now joined by Roanoke head coach Paige Moyer. And Paige, a tough ball game your last time out against a And we're having a little problem with our audio, so we'll hold that interview for you for later on. As we see Robbie Winfield has just come in with Jamaican, former assistant coach for Roanoke College. And also at halftime, we're going to have head coach Bill Leatherman, former head coach of Bridgewater, one of the legends in the ODAC. He's in here in the gym today, and he's going to come visit with us later on. But let's talk some more about Rono College as we have a few moments here, Jerry. And with Quasi back, or we, that's certainly going to add some punch in the scoring column as well as in defensive intensity. But against St. Mary's the last time, Rono came up short by 10, but had some big games from Daniel Eco and Andrew Daniels. Well, and it's, it's, it's interesting, you know, that the coach from the other, the opposing team really understands, you know, the, the play of, the, you know, the versatile players that the Rono College has. And, you know, Jordan Thacker stepping up with, with 20, and and then Eco steps out and, and knocks down some shots. I mean, they had a, you know, they got a lot of players that they can go to, and it's just, you know, getting the confidence in the in the floor game and, and getting those shots that they can uh, convert on. I think, you know, that they have, you know, a lot of other um, players on this team that could lead on any given night. Well, and Paige Moore has a deep team this year. It, it is, and you don't see a whole lot of drop-off. I mean, they, you know, consistently have been able to either hold leads or, you know, even stretch them out when they've had their had their uh, subs on the floor. And it gives, you know, a great, um, you know, great depth. And, you know, having that ability to, to simply just be able to step back and, and take a break on the bench, sometimes it helps you get back in the flow of the game, the starters. And, you know, it's uh, it's good here that, that they'll have an opportunity to continue, continue to build off of that. And you've talked often about how important it is to get uh, to maintain your home court and your home court here. And this is a big game for both of these teams. Bridgewater comes in at one and two in conference play. Roanoke at zero and three, looking for their first win. Right, and you know the other games that that Bridgewater has played, they've played relatively close games <coughs> down at Randolph, and they won against Emory and Henry. And you know it's it's one of those things where you know the, the loss against Lynchburg, a five point loss. We saw that team play earlier here this year in, in a tip off tournament, and you know they have a lot of talent as well. So if they're playing with Lynchburg, then they're going to be a good test here for the Maroons this afternoon. And right now we're going to take this time out. We'll be back with the starting lineups. You're listening to Roanoke College Basketball on the Maroons Radio Network. This is going to...
11 points per ball game. Number 12 is Matthew Hunter. He is a 5'10 sophomore from Newport News, Virginia. Hunter so far this year, 11 assists, 17 turnovers on the season. Number 42 is Ed Reddick. He stands 6'4". He is a sophomore from Virginia Beach. And Reddick this year, 11 points per ball game and six rebounds per game. Finally, Rami Powell, number 54, the 6'9 junior center from Orange, Virginia. And Powell averaging just over one point per ball game. For the Roanoke College Maroons, under the direction of head coach Paige Moyer, in his 24th season in charge of the Roanoke program with a record of seven and five on the season. They are 0-3 in ODAC action. At one guard, number 10, Julian Ramirez. And Ramirez has brought a lot of athleticism and quickness to this Roanoke ball club. Number four, 11, Fozzie Amponsa, the leading scorer on the team, six foot senior from Woodbridge, Virginia. As the Maroons control the opening tip, Clay Lacey, number 24 out of Cave Spring High School. Daniel Eco, number 30 in the post at 6'7. Jordan Thacker running things from the point, number two, the former JV player for Roanoke College. Ramirez will drive left baseline, pull up from 15 and in and out on the shot. Eco keeps it alive. Lacey has the offensive board. Double team, kicks it out to Eco in the right corner. They go up top, left side for Ramirez. Out to Amponsa on the right wing. Fozzie, drive, floater off the glass and good. And it was really nice, you know, really nice second chance opportunity. Clay Lacey battling for the ball inside. Almost gave it up on the wing and Eco gets it back out to the point. Ramirez does a great job creating and getting it over to Fozzie. Strong drive to the basket by Ed Reddick, misses the layup. Rona comes up with the loose ball. Quickly at the other end, it's Lacey in the right block. Double team, turnaround jumper block, gets it back and they'll call a jump ball and Bridgewater will control. Our officials for the ball game, our referee is Damon Williams, assisted by Shane Scott and Mitch Anders. You can see Ramirez's ability to kind of get that ball inside to Clay Lacey, but he was quickly double teamed and nowhere to go with the ball and when he went up, the shot was capped. Stay in the man-to-man -man defense. Out top for Stapleton. He's short on the three from the top. Rebound falls into Lacey's hands. Roanoke looks to push, but Bridgewater's back on D. Bridgewater in their road red with gold numerals and white trim. Thacker handling on the left side. Down inside to Eco. Muscles it up. Gets fouled on the attempt. He'll get a pair here. Rami Powell picks up the personal foul. First of the ball game. Roanoke in their home whites with maroon numerals and black trim. Edmonton doing a really good job getting that post up position and that time a strong dribble to the floor and up through the defender created the foul. So Eco goes to the free throw line. 6'8 sophomore from Richmond and he cans the first one. So far on the season shooting 63% from the line. Second shot is good. So Roanoke now owns a 4 nothing advantage with a minute and a half gone by. Just a little token full court pressure. There's a Thacker. And they're content to play behind it. Now Quasi comes up with a steal. And he'll race down the right side of the floor, gets the layup, won't drop for him. Eco with the follow. He picks up another personal foul, get two more free throws. Shane Scott. Blows the whistle, and, whistle and I believe Powell just picked up his second foul. Quasi doesn't normally miss those in the open open court like that. You know, he probably has his ankle taped up a little bit today, and his left ankle, and he probably, I think he went off of his right if I was watching that correctly. Eco hustling down the floor. You like to see that for a big guy. He's three for three from the line as he connects on the first one. As Powell comes out, and David Larson, number 40, checks in. Larson, a 6'6 junior from Oak Hill. Went to Oakton High School, same school as Andrew Daniels for the Maroons, as Eco gets both free throws. Roanoke leads 6 0. In the middle, Stapleton misses a wild bank shot, gets his own board. Eco cuts him off. They have to kick it out top. Thomas will take a three, miss it left. Rebound snatched by Ramirez. Looks to push. Down the right side for Thacker. Thacker to the rack. Thacker. Misses the layup. 
Rebound, Lacey loses it, foul called. That's done a really nice job on the defensive end of the glass. And that time it created another fast break opportunity for the Maroons. And second straight time down the floor that they've missed a layup. And Lacey will get the personal foul trying to get the loose ball. Here it comes the other end. Thomas, two on one. And layup no good by Larson left of the basket, but he does draw the foul. Eco picks up the personal foul. Again, that was just a good effort in the backcourt. So Larson will toe the line. And he puts Bridgewater on the board with the first free throw. Larson, 11 of 14 from the line coming in, misses the second one, and there's Eco for the rebound. So our score, 6-1, 17-42, first half. Maroons have led throughout. Imponsa out top for Thacker. Both teams playing man-to-man -man so far this afternoon. I think Runnock has the ability to get the ball to the wing and get it down into the post when they want to. Right corner, Imponsa pull up jumper from 17, off, rebound, Eco keeps it alive. Lacey runs it down on the sideline and steps on the sideline, says Mitch Anders. It will be Bridgewater basketball. Well, hustling after the ball that time, just wasn't able to get it. And now it picks up the foul in the backcourt, trying to get back to press. And that's his second personal. Again, Roanoke showing man-to-man -man pressure in backcourt. Lacey staying out there with two fouls. Three minutes gone by, Maroons by five. Reddick backing down Lacey in the right post. Shot is good. Play maybe backed off just a little bit that time with the two fouls and made a tough shot. Eco at the other end, left of the basket, muscles his way in and puts it up and in over Reddick. Six for Eco. I really like how he's asserting himself on the offensive end, taking a little bit of that scoring pressure off of Quasi. Reddick between the circles against Lacey will drive left, give it up. Hunter out top gets a screen to the foul line to Reddick on the pick and pop. He drives, puts it up, it will fall, and the foul. Let's see who gets this one. It will be Jordan Thacker with the personal foul trying to help. Saw that little two-man game that time, and the runout got caught in the switch with Jordan Thacker having to defend against the taller Hunter. Not Hunter, but Reddick. Reddick sticks the free throw. Andrew Daniels coming into the game for Jordan Thacker along with Cameron Smith. So, little 6-2 mini run here has drawn the Eagles to within two. Cam Smith, a lot of energy on the floor for Roanoke, really helped pick the team up against St. Mary's last time out, coming off the bench for the first time in his career, and he's got the ball between the rings. Now, Quasi in the right corner, drives, gives it up, and the ball goes out of bounds. He's trying to hit one of his teammates flashing to the foul line, but as Thacker dove down into the paint, the ball was thrown behind him and out of bounds. You don't like to leave your feet when you're an offensive player. And conditions change just a little bit. The player wasn't where he was, where he thought he was going to be. Matthew Hunter will bring it up to, against Daniels. Left to right in the first half for the Eagles. Stapleton guarded by Ramirez. Roanoke man to man. Backdoor cut. Thomas lost his man. Amponsan gets an easy bucket left of the basket. And Reddick commits a personal foul as Ramirez was driving at the other end. It was a really nice play the last time down the floor. It was a, kind of that Princeton backdoor cut. You can't turn your back for a minute on a guy as quick as Thomas. Tied at eight, 15-53, first half. Daniels now, left side it goes to Amponsa. Has Eco in the block, gets him the ball. Eco backing his way in against Larson. Ball is partially blocked, goes out of bounds. Smith let it go, and it was actually off of Roanoke. So the Maroons turn it over. Eco shot blocked that time on the help defense. I think that was Reddick coming over to help Larson. 
Daniels knocks the inbound pass off the baseline. Got a spot throw in, and Cameron Smith's shown that all year, his ability to trap off the inbounds. That time Bridgewater does a little bit better job picking to get Thomas the ball in the open court. Reddick out front against Smith. Crosses him over to the right hand. Jumps up in the lane. Zips a pass across the floor. It's on the ground. Larson couldn't handle it. Smith finally gets it to Ramirez. Roanoke looks to run. Ramirez flying down the middle of the floor. Left side for Imponsa. Pull up three. Is short. Rebound. Larson rips it down. Gives it Thomas. Left side. He's going to push the ball ahead. Daniels is back to cut him off. Fires one underneath. Collected by Reddick to the trailer. Larson for the slam. Somebody lost their man in transition that time, and Larson had a wide open lane, and no one anywhere within 10 feet of him. Bridgewater on top for the first time in this game, 10 to 8. We've played five minutes. Roanoke jumped out to a 6-0 lead, and the Eagles have fought their way back into this thing. Ramirez drives left side. Larson helps. Floater, no good. Stapleton clears. Nearly loses the ball. Gets it up to Hunter. Daniels. Cuts off the penetration. Down low, pass knocked away by Imponsa. Baited Larson trying to find Stapleton underneath, who was all wide open, and Imponsa stepped in front for the clean steal. I didn't see any way they didn't complete that pass, but Quasi's quickness, quick hands, quick feet, got back into that passing lane. Second turnover for the Eagles. Eco wants it, left block, and we have a foul inside. And they're gonna have an illegal screen called against the Maroons. It's Smith. Yep, Smith picks up the personal foul. That's now five team fouls against Roanoke. Just three against the Eagles. Subs coming in for both ball clubs. Ethan Humphreys out of James River High School, number four, comes in at the point. And Ramirez sits down. Cam Ponsal goes out. Zach Barrett from Hidden Valley High School here in the Roanoke Valley will come in for him. And on the other side, number 14, Zach Hunter is now on the floor. Also number 32, Aaron Adams joining Reddick and Thomas who takes a short jumper air ball over the top from the right side saved in bounds and picked up by Eco and touched at the same time by Adams who was standing out of bounds so it's Roanoke basketball also on for the Eagles is Kenneth Waugh number 34 1359 to play in the first half Bridgewater 10 Roanoke 8 we have a break in the action we'll take a timeout and be back you're listening to Roanoke College basketball on ESPN radio Roanoke College timeless and true Smart and solid. Practical and professional. Making discoveries about yesterday. Creating visions for tomorrow. Lifted by a winning college spirit. Forging lifetime friendships with professors who prepare you for a place at the head of an operating table or another bright future. Roanoke College. Classic for tomorrow. back at the Bass Center. Roanoke trails by two, 10 to eight, with 13.59 to play in the first half. Maroons looking for their first win in conference action. And so far, both teams very aggressive, Jerry, at both ends of the floor. Yeah, not a whole lot of, not a whole lot of um, pressure like we've seen in a few of the previous games, but it's been a pretty well played game so far. I mean, it's back and forth, a game of a couple little runs. Run up seeing a new zone defense for the first time here. A little trapping. 1-3-1. One, one. And Bridgewater tips the pass out of bounds as Roanoke was trying to go down inside with the ball. Humphreys will put it in play left of the basket on the baseline. They've gotten some good looks off that inbound. Barrett, middle of the lane. Kind of a one-handed jumper push shot thing there. And it sco he scores it from about 15 feet away. Barrett, who had six points against the Eagles last time out. And there's a two-pointer from the left side. I saw Reddick really chasing that one like he had missed it. And then all of a sudden it goes no, nothing but net. He's got seven. Again, we're seeing the 1-3-1 one, trap, trapping out front. They go down into Eco. Double team stolen away by Reddick. Three on two. Ahead it is to Adams, to the trailer. Reddick, and he will miss the dunk. 
Rebounded by Thomas, throws up an air ball. Reddick with the offensive board. Adams will put up a three from the left side and bury it. Runnick just a little unfortunate at that time off the missed dunk. Now Runnick back in transition. Andrew Daniels to the basket. And he will score. Off of a nice assist by Ethan Humphreys. And now we're seeing a little bit of the fast-paced action. And back one more time. Bridgewater by three. Reddick starts to drive from the top and takes steps, says Shane Scott. Easy call out in front of, right in front of the official. Number 44, Daniel McLean checks in for Bridgewater. And they will pull Reddick for the first time this afternoon. Humphrey, Smith, Barrett, Daniels, and Eco for Roanoke. Eco has not been out of the game yet. Again, they're showing the 1-3-1 with the trap action. Smith underneath for Eco. Left-handed layup is no good. Rebound McLean. Hunter will push it down the right side. Humphrey's right there to shut him down. Great pass. Out that top, time. wide open. Walls three is nothing but the bottom of the net. And at George Witt High School. Roanoke now down by six. Steal from Humphreys. At the other end, Adams makes the layup, and Daniels fouls him. Reverse layup is good. And Roanoke, all of a sudden, up 6-0 to start the game, and now it has been a 20-6 run. And the Maroons trail by eight points with a chance for it to drop to nine after at the free throw. And we have a 30-second timeout taken by Paige Moyer. And you see there right there, there's just a couple little momentum builders there for the, for the Eagles. You know, they missed the dunk, and then... Looks like Cameron Smith was going to get to the, the layup or get the rebound, and then they got a layup off of that and forced the turnover off that 1-3-1 trap and get a three-pointer in transition. And then they come back and, and now get the, get the steal off the turnover by Humphreys. And they get another three-point opportunity. And elsewhere today in top 25 action, Pittsburgh, ranked 24th in the country, has fallen to Rutgers 67-62. to as the teams return to the floor. And Bridgewater shooting 8 of 13. They're 62% from the floor to start the game. Runnock only 4 of 11. And free throw is good by Adams. So he's got six points on the game. Again, the 1-3-1. One, one. Roanoke has yet to solve this. Ramirez, right side for Daniels, fakes the three, dribble drive down the baseline and gets bumped out of bounds. They'll call the personal foul. That should go against McLean, I believe. Normally against an odd front defense like a 1-3-1, one, one, you'd like to bring another guard up at least to the top to create that advantage and then maybe bring someone into the middle right at the foul line. Right baseline, Barrett in the Amplensaw right side. Pull up jumper off the catch is going to be long. And kept alive by Smith, controlled by Alex Went Out top, Ramirez, three, long and left. Rebound yanked down by Adams, who's been very active since coming in the ball game. He'll bring it across the timeline. Uh, 0 for 2 from beyond the arc. 21-12 our score, 11.40 to go in the half. And driving baseline, having a shot swatted away by Went was Adams, and out it comes for a 15-foot jumper from Wall, and he knocks down another one. He's 2 for 2 from the field. Hasn't even hit the rim. 23 to 12 now. And Ponsa out top. Again, the same zone defense. And now we're in a, are we looking at a 2-3, Jerry? It's, it's still, the, still, still like the a one? one like a 1-3-1, one, one, but they've kind of. You've got two guys jumping out high, though. Daniels open, right side three, long off the heel. Rebound, Hunter. Pushing it down the floor, Ramirez awaits him. They go to Wall, driving left side, and he gets bumped by Smith, who picks up his second personal foul. It'll be the seventh team foul, so it'll put the Eagles into a one and one now. Wall, one, one for three from the stripe. So Veronica had gotten into a little bit of rhythm, Rick, against that man-to-man -man defense, was able to get some nice, easy buckets inside. Now that they've gone to the zone, it seems like they're just forcing up some, some early shots. They're really not able to work the defense as much as they were before. Free throw long, Amponsa tips it over to Ramirez. Here goes Ramirez, driving right side, shot's no good, may have gotten fouled. Smith puts it back up, he gets drilled, he'll get a pair. Has an opportunity to 
get off of that number 12. It seems like they've been stuck there for quite a while, Rick. Yeah, they have. Smith misses the free throw. Cam Smith just now 5 of 16 from the line this year. Thomas gets a breather. And it'll bring in Kyle Welty, number 20, for the Eagles. Second free throw is good. Roanoke finally has something other than 12 on the board. It's 13 for the Maroons and 23 for the Eagles. Maroons are trapping in backcourt. They throw over the top. Two on one at the other end. Adams pull up 15 footer short from the left side. Nice rebound by Went. Give it off to Ramirez. Ramirez flying down the floor. Three on three. Goes to Daniels. Daniels floater from the baseline is good. That was a nice soft touch that time by Andrew Daniels. He kind of got behind the board. It looked like he was just kind of reaching out from, from behind the glass. He's got four coming off a 19.9 rebound performance against St. Mary's. Hunter uses the screen. Ramirez fights through. Left open. Wealthy shoots from the left side or right side. That's no good. Rebound by Stapleton. Back to Wealthy. Zips it underneath for a wide open McLean for the easy two. They just got caught out of from their help defense that time. It'd be wide open. 25 15. Maroons trail. We break 10 minutes remaining in the half. Amponsad gets around Stapleton to the foul line. Goes all the way to the basket. Makes the layup. Nobody rotated over. Amponsad with four. That's a lead to eight. 25-17. 9.47 to go. Amponsad missed the last ball game with a sprained ankle. Stapleton gets away from Amponsad on a screen. Pulled up jumper. No good from 18. Rebound Smith. Good box out by the Maroons. Here's Amponsad down the left side. Goes in the middle and gets fouled on his way to the basket. I think that's Stapleton, yes, who's going to get called for the personal. That's just 16 foul. Tyler Akers into the game for the Maroons. Good three-point shooter. Left baseline, inbounding is Ramirez. They find Amponsa on the right side, fakes the three against Reddick. Drive in the middle, goes to the rack, layup. No, but they'll call a blocking foul, and that will go against, let's see who, I think it's Adams who's on the ground. It is. And he was inside the semicircle. I mean, we've not seen that a lot this year, but that was very easy call for Damon Williams. Amponsa will go to the free throw line. 82% free throw shooter on the year. Maroons down by eight. Led early, 6 nothing, but it's been Eagles since that time. Nothing but the nylon there. And Hunter comes out, and Hunter comes in. Zach out, Matthew in. Both from Newport News went to the same high school. We have to surmise they are brothers. Amponsa's second one is no good. Reddick with a one-handed rebound, holding off Went with his left arm, grabbed it with his right. I was checking to make sure they weren't twins, but they were in different years. One's a freshman, one's a sophomore. Reddick driving around Went, who left him to help, and Went clobbers him from behind. That's a freshman mistake there. Just block the ball. Don't sweep that arm through. He was trying to make up for, for what he had lost in the footwork. So Reddick, who's one for one from the line, goes back to the stripe. Short on the first free throw. You hear the clang of the iron. Second free throw also missed. So overcompensated that time. He was a little bit long with the second one. Roanoke's went, has the board, so the Maroons come the other way. It's a straight man-to-man -man now. And the Maroons were able to get the ball inside earlier against this defense. And puts on the left baseline, dribble drive, loses the ball. Has it tipped away, and it goes out of bounds. And they're going to say jump ball, so the Maroons will keep it. That's an unusual that's a, call. I don't know if that's a good break or a bad break for the Maroons. At least they keep the ball. Roanoke within seven, 25-18. Shot Dan clock doesn't reset. It's at 15 right now. Daniels on the sideline looking to try and get it in. Finally finds Amplitz on the baseline. They trap him. Out front the ball comes. Ramirez with 10 to shoot. 
Went wants it inside, they can't get it to him. Shot clock is at five, Daniels down the middle. Pump fake, leaner, good, off his glass. Nice play that time. He looked like he wanted to pass the ball across the lane. Instead goes up and knocks it in off the glass. Runner cuts it to five. Shot short, Wealthy with the offensive board, misses the shot. Ramirez has the rebound, Roanoke runs. Four on three, left side for Daniels, reverse layup, good. Right. Andrew Daniels is moving so well and controlling his body beautifully. On the move. Timeout called by Bridgewater. Up by 11. They are now just up by three with 8.16 to go. Good block last time to get the ball out in transition. Ramirez battled for it, kind of got control of it and fought to get to the other end. He's one of those guys that runs just about as fast with the ball in his hands with it, without it. And a nice dish to Andrew Daniels, who comes up underneath the basket, uses that for a little bit of a shield against the defender to convert the basket of Marina Maroon within three. Roanoke needs to take care of the ball. That's been an issue for them as the earlier in this ball game, giving up six points off of their four turnovers. So Roanoke was down 23 to 23 to 12. They've now gone on a 10 to 2 run of their own. It has been a game of spurts. On the floor for the Maroons, we have Fonsab, Ramirez, Daniels, Went, and Akers. Waugh, Adams, Thomas back in, Reddick and Matthew Hunter handling things out top. Roanoke in the 2-3 zone right now. Adams, left elbow to Thomas in the wing. They reverse the ball, looking for Hunter out front, takes a three, that's going to be short. Went with an easy rebound and almost threw that away, picked up by Ramirez. Bridgewater did well against the Maroons last year, the last time these teams played with a 2-3 zone when the Maroons played the 2-3, but good defensive possession there for Roanoke. Daniels drives left side, goes to the basket, misses that one out of control on the layup, and it's poked out of bounds. It'll belong to the Eagles. Could have gotten fouled on that drive as well. I think he was hoping for the contact when he split the, split, split the defenders. Kind of went up and through and got just a little bit more on it than he thought for as Hunter will jog it across midcourt. Picked up by Ramirez. Ronick staying in the zone. Adams at the foul line, takes a jumper with two men around and misses the shot. Infanta runs down the loose ball in the far corner. A little tight road clock on the baseline, keep his feet in bounds. Bridgewater in a man-to-man -man defense. Infanta looking for Daniels finds him over on the right wing. Daniels gets around his man, goes to the basket, misses the floater. Akers tip not there. Daniels grabs it in midair and throws it in. Yeah, that's what we were talking about, just his ability to create. I mean, he got his hands on the ball the last time down and kind of takes the shot. Akers keeps it alive and the ball never touched the ground and Andrew Daniels puts it back in. One point game, shot no good on the three point attempt. And that one goes off of Amponsa on the wild rebound. The ball went over the basket. Wall trying to three from the right side. And subs coming in for the Maroons as we have a timeout called. And this will be a full timeout, so we will take the break as well. Roanoke has climbed back into this one. They trail by one, 25-24, 6.42 remaining. First half, we're back in 30 on the Maroons Radio Network. I did receive a non-athletic scholarship upon entering uh, school. I got the presidential scholarship, which was huge for me. Back at the Bass Center, Rick Seidel, Jerry Austin with you as the Maroons trail 25-24. Roanoke jumped out to a 6-0 lead to start the ball game, and then Bridgewater took over, and the Eagles led by as many as 11. And Roanoke now has climbed back to within one at 25-24. Andrew Daniels leading all scores with 10 points, and he has been a big factor in this comeback. He now goes to take a seat on the bench as the Maroons put Thacker, Humphreys, Amponsa, Eco, and Akers on the floor. It'll be Thomas, Reddick, Waugh, Adams, and Matthew Hunter for the Eagles. 
Bridgewater ball over on the far sideline near the corner. Roanoke can sit in the 2 3 zone. Adams in the left corner. Amponsad jumps out. They continue to move the ball around the perimeter. Thomas will take a three from out front over Humphreys, who closed out nicely and then got the rebound. Good hustle played that time by Ethan Humphreys. Pass to Akers, left side. He'll drive into the bait to the baseline. Missed the shot. Off balance as Hunter got in his way. Rebounded by Wall. Here's Thomas at the other end. Akers covers up Adams on the left on the right wing. I think Bridgewater's just looking for the spacing and the spots. You see them putting a player in the middle of the lane. Wall losing the handle, puts it off his knee. No, off of Akers' knee off the baseline. 14 to shoot, Bridgewater basketball, right of the basket. And Welty comes in for Adams. Also coming back in is Larson. And let's see who takes a seat, Matthew Hunter. Thomas to inbound the ball. Roanoke gonna play some zone here off the inbound play. So they toss it out front. Shot clock down to 10. Thomas between the circles. Shot clock at five. Wall launches a three from the left side. That one's no good. Rebound, Thomas. Long shot, long rebound. Roanoke has given up nine. Scratch that. Bridgewater has given up nine offensive rebounds. The Maroons have allowed seven. They go right corner to for the jump shot, and that is number 20. Thank you. 20 is wealthy. Wealthy with a 13-foot shot off the bounce. Lead back up to three, 27-24, 5-19 and counting. Bridgewater staying man-to-man. Amponsaw gets a screen out front. He'll penetrate around Thomas. Leaner no good off the glass. Rebound collected by Akers. Has it knocked away. Here comes Reddick. And Humphreys bangs into them. They'll pick up the foul. Not necessarily a bad foul. It was a three-on-two at the other end. Humphreys first. It will be free throws coming at the other end. 19 foul against the Maroons. So Smith, who missed his last two, misses the front end of the one and one here. Bridgewater helping out Roanoke with some missed free throws. Maroons rebound and look to run. Bridgewater's back, five minutes to go in the half. And Ponsa out top, gets a screen from Eco, driving the left side, double team into Eco at the elbow. Eco to the basket, jump hook, drops. And Daniel did a nice job that time, kind of with the bounce, and bumped into the player a little bit just to create a little bit of space, and pulls the Maroons within one, 27-26. Six of Roanoke's first eight points went to Eco. He's been silent since until that last basket. Reddick in the middle of the lane, turn around, Jay, no. Eco fighting for the rebound, takes it away from Reddick. Here's Humphreys down the middle. Slows it up. Eco fighting for position inside. Amponsa, right wing, outside three. Daniels wants it. They can't get it to him. And luckily for the Maroons, as Eco was triple teamed, and Amponsa tried to bounce it in anyway. Bridgewater knocked the ball off the end line. I don't, I don't particularly like that decision making that time by Quasi. He's not coming out of the game for that reason, but <laughs> it was just a it was just a poor decision. He and uh, Akers go to the bench. Lacey. And Daniels come back in. And the ball gets thrown into backcourt on the inbounds, and Thacker has to hustle back to get it as Thomas was going for the steal. 12 on the shot clock. Under 10 now on the clock. Thacker pushes off. Good call. Right in front of Mitch Anders, which used the right arm as he was going left to push off to create space for his shot. Thacker picks up his second personal foul. So he and Lacey and Smith all with two for Roanoke. Time you extend that arm and you see the player go back, it, it's almost like an offensive pass interference in football. They go down inside to Larson. He loses the handle. Picked up by Thomas out top. Thrown into the right corner for Welty's three. That's off. Rebound Lacey in the far corner. Ahead to Humphreys. Daniels left side open from downtown. Bingo! Andrew Daniels, 13 points, and he has put the Maroons up 29-27 with 3.28 to go in the half. Crowd starting to make some noise. Nice crowd here this afternoon. The foul line, they go kick it out to Thomas, left side. 
Now top wall, another three, got it. And it seems like we've seen that several times this year. Runner makes a three and the opposing team comes back and matches it. Eight for Waugh, 30-29 Eagles. Down into Eco they go. Eco is called for the charge. And I gotta say, that was a great job by McLean of flopping. And Daniel dropped his shoulder just a little bit. And, and now he's got two personal fouls as well with 3.01 to go in the half. That's a big foul right there. After Runnick regained the lead by two, Bridgewater comes back and answers with a three. 30-29, Eagles. Larson, left corner. Down inside they go to Larson after he kicked it out, and he loses that pass out of bounds to the Maroons. Turnover number seven. Turnover number six for Bridgewater. Run up with a chance to take the lead, trailing by one. Wealthy picks up Humphreys at midcourt. Daniels, left side, outside three, has Wall on him. Eco wants it and gets it in the block. He comes to the middle, goes for the jump hook, has it capped. It'll be a jump ball, will go the other direction. I think he lost control of that a little bit on the way up. And That's the second time we've, we've seen that. And we saw against St. Mary's, that shot get blocked. He kind of leans. He kind of leans into it with these with these hooks. Sometimes you want to kind of keep that back behind your head a little bit, and you don't normally worry about a hook shot being blocked as much. Stapleton comes in for Larson for Bridgewater. Runner going to go back to the zone. Lacey and Eco on the floor with two fouls. They go to the foul line, kick it over to Welty for a three from the left side. That's off left, same as his last three attempt. Lacey had the rebound, but gets knocked away from him and out of bounds by Thomas. It'll be Maroon basketball. These players don't give up on any on any loose ball. You like to see the hustle by both teams. Ramirez back on the floor, handles things out top for the Maroons. Give to Amponsa, who's also back on the floor. A lot of long passes and across this zone. You like to see him closer. Imponsa goes back door, left side, gets a nice bounce pass from Daniels at the foul line and scores. Quickly, Bridgewater pushing it the other way, down by one. Wall and Imponsa right there. Wall will drive, kick over to Welty. He'll penetrate. Floater is going to be good. Daniels threaded the needle that time and Welty, nice move to the basket, nice little touch off the rim and board and into the. Eagles back up by a digit. A minute and a half to go before the break. Imponsa in the middle. Leans in, shot blocked, almost banks it in. The defender almost banked that shot in. Wall gets the loose ball. Yeah, I'm gonna stay in the zone to finish the half, it looks like. Maybe protect Eco a little bit. Thomas out top. Brings it over to the right side. And there's Imponsa. They go to the foul line. To Wall, fadeaway jumper, rattles around and won't go. And did everything but go in. Here's Ramirez quickly down the way the other end. Pull up jumper off the glass, no good. Rebound, Stapleton. Four on three with Thomas with the ball now right side. Going to drive the middle around Daniels. Floater, no good. Daniels snatches the board. Looks to run. Eagles are back. Three on four. They'll play five on five. Got kind of a chance to go two for one if they want. Daniels, a lot of dribbling, finally gives it up to Imponsa, and he gets fouled by Stapleton on the penetration. Stapleton's second foul. And Stapleton got a nice knee in the thigh for his credit as well. 37.3 remaining on the clock, 32-31 Eagles, but Imponsa at the line for a pair. saw with seven points on the game. Perfect. So doing the job there at the line to keep themselves in this game. Now 
eight of eight of ten. Makes them both. Nine of eleven. So Rono got now back up by one. We've got about a minute, a second and a half between differential between the shot clock and the game clock. Virtually holds for the last shot of the game if they'd like, of the of the half, not the game. Adams, Reddick, Hunter. It's Hunter's on the bench. Adams, Reddick, Thomas, Larson, and Wealthy are at the ball right side. Roanoke sitting in the two-three zone. Just don't want to get in a scramble situation where you leave somebody wide open. Reddick spinning baseline, got away from Alex. Went for an easy deuce. Oh, that was a beautiful move. Seven seconds to go. Ramirez down the middle, drives all the way to the rack, has it stripped away at the last moment right before he went up for the shot. With 2.4 ticks to go, it'll be Maroon Corrected. basketball. Correct, the uh, out of bounds, that's to the Maroons. 2.4 seconds left. Eagles by one, 34-33. They've led by as many as 11 here in the first half. Amplinsa right baseline, into Wendt. Back to Amplinsa. Get, does not get the shot off in time. It doesn't go, but I think Amplinsa wanted a foul on the jump shot. And we are at halftime. Your score, Bridgewater 34, Roanoke 33. We're back in a moment on ESPN Radio. Mac and Bob's open for business in 1980. Over the years, we've grown from 10 stools to a full-service restaurant that seats 330 people. Now we invite you to come try our new breakfast menu featuring sweet potato pancakes, eggs benedict, omelets made to order, stuffed French toast, homemade sausage and gravy biscuits, and much more. Open for breakfast Monday through Saturday at 8 a.m., Sunday brunch, 10 a.m. till 2. See you for breakfast at Mac and Bob's in Salem. Something I discovered in myself is that if I have a goal, I can accomplish it. The well-rounded experience. At a Division three school, you primarily a student athlete, so the school is really shaped around you developing yourself Brands as a complete individual. Shot, score! A family with your team that can guide you. For information or schedules on Valley Vision TV programs, visit us on the internet at valleyvisiontv.com. Remember, you're watching the Valley's only true local network, Valley Vision TV, Comcast Channel 7. If you would like to sponsor this program or advertise on Valley Vision TV, call us at 540-397-1051 or email to sales at valleyvisiontv.com. Remember, you're watching the Valley's only true local network, Valley Vision TV, Comcast Channel 7. Be sure to catch Roanoke College Sports on Valley Vision TV, Comcast Channel 7 in Roanoke, Salem, Botetourt, Lexington, and Blacksburg. Brought to you by Mac and Bob's Main Street, Salem. For programming information or schedules, go to valleyvisiontv.com. Four, three. Good evening and welcome to the C. Homer Bass Gymnasium for tonight's women's basketball contest between Rona College and Holland College. Holland comes in with a record of two and six. Rona comes in with a record of three and seven. Holland's leading score is Jasmine Green with an average of 19.7 a game. And Rona is led by Paxton Glenn and Laurel Hankins, both juniors. Laurel is averaging nine points a game, and Paxton Glenn is the leading score at 13.2 points a game. Your starter for the evening, first for Holland, a junior center, six foot from Eden, Texas, number 13, Chancey Wright. At Ford, 5'5", five, five, sophomore from Silver Spring, Maryland, Brittany Campbell, number 15. At guard, a senior 5'6", from Hampton, Virginia, and Tab High School, number 20, Jasmine Green. At guard, a freshman from Leesburg, Virginia, number 22, Kelly Maxey. And at guard, a senior from Richmond, Virginia, number 23, Lacey Forrest. Verona, a 5'7 junior from Dublin, Virginia, number 4, Laurel Hankins. A 5'10 junior from Buxton, North Carolina, number 10, Paxton Gwynn. A 5'6 senior from Kinderhook, New York, number 11, Rachel Delahunt. A 5'6 freshman from Harrisonburg, Virginia, number 15, Kelsey Smith. And a 5'9 sophomore from Cornelius, North Carolina, number 20, Tatum McKee. We'll be back with play-by-play 
and all the exciting action from the Bass Center after the National Anthem. This is Roanoke College Women's Basketball. Good on media timeout. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Welcome back to See Homer Bass Gymnasium for this evening's ODAC Women's Basketball Contest between Roanoke College and Hollins College. Hollins College has taken the floor. Number 13, Chancey Wright, is going to jump center. And Roanoke College is about to take the floor after a final word from Coach Susan Dunnigan. Should be an interesting first game after the winter break. First game of the 2000. 
13, New Year. Rolling up now, breaking huddle, ready to take the floor. Again, their starters, Laurel Hankins, Paxton Gwynn, Kelsey Smith, Tatum McKee, and Rachel Delahunt. Paxton Gwynn will jump center against Chansey Wright. Rachel's about ready to put the ball in play. Center jump goes to Chansey Wright. It's controlled by Holland. And this is uh, Kelly Maxey out front. Jasmine Green, under her right, back to Kelly Maxey. Holland's inside to Chansey Wright. Shot goes up, no good. Rebound, Chansey Wright. That's going to be a jump ball. Possession, Roanoke. So, Roanoke gets their first possession of the contest. 1941 remaining in first half. Tatum McKee will inbound the ball. Apparently over the breakup in...
as the Maroons getting set to take the floor for the second half against Bridgewater, trailing by one, 34 to 33. And Jerry, your thoughts on the second half? Well, I think they're going to have to look to get the ball back inside a little bit. I thought they were real successful. That the Maroons were real successful to start the game. They got off to that 6-0 run. They got Eco some nice looks on the interior. And then Bridgewater jumped into that zone, and I think they started settling for some quick shots. And I think, you know, based upon you know, what we've seen here in the first half, these two teams are evenly matched, and it's going to come down to execution in the half-court set. We've, we've seen some transition points, but most of it has come on the half-court end. I think Renwick will retain possession. There were three, actually three jump balls in that first half. Yep, two, it is Roanoke basketball. Two off of block shots and one off of that call where they couldn't determine who it went off of. So Roanoke will have the ball to get things started, moving left to right here in the second half. Amponsa will drive right side against Thomas, get to the basket, miss the layup again. Roanoke has missed several shots at point blank range. Left side Stapleton as they push the other way. Pull up jumper short from 12. Rebound by Ramirez, and he is quickly tied up by Powell. And the arrow favors the Eagles. I think Bridgewater fortunate at that time not to get called for the foul, but the jump ball instead. Rich orders Thomas right side against Thacker. Roanoke playing man to man here to get things started in the second half. Left side Stapleton against Ramirez. Shot clock down to 20. Gets rubbed off with a screen. Stapleton comes down the middle, throws it underneath for Powell, who wasn't expecting the pass. And it stopped rolling to the basket to box out Eco, anticipating a shot, and the ball goes out of bounds to Roanoke College. So Powell was supposed to roll to the basket. He'll know next time. Turnover number seven for Bridgewater. Closely guarded, the five-second count was on. Now Ramirez gets a little bit of space to break the cycle. Imponsa against Thomas to the foul line. Kick it out to Ramirez. Shot clock down to 15. Ramirez, he'll drive. Go left side, left hand. Missed the layup. Rebound loose. Stapleton's got it. Three red shirts inside against Eco, and Bridgewater prevails. Reddick around Lacey. Baseline goes reverse layup and scores. Stayed on his man that time, allowed Reddick to get to the other side of the basket. Reddick's now got 11. Eagles by three. Eco in the middle, goes to the jump hook, partially blocked again. And here come the Eagles. Stapleton, right side, right against Lacey. Just gets a screen right, Eco hedges. And now it's Stapleton on the wing. So one of them, his first three possessions have gotten to the basket twice. Goes baseline, tries to find Hunter on a wraparound pass. Does Stapleton, can't handle it. Here's Amplitza at the other end to Thacker, open. Left side for three, that's going to be well short. Rebound, Reddick has it knocked away from behind. And he and Thacker flying for the ball. It's still loose, Stapleton's got it. Stapleton knocks into Amplitza and it's going to be a blocking foul called on Quasi and that's a good call. It'll be a pair of free throws. So there were bodies flying all over the floor that time. Looked like the ball was going to go out of bounds and <coughs> ricochets back in and Bridgewater now at the line. Two free throws. Stapleton to the free throw line. Has not scored in the ball game yet. Still hasn't scored as that free throw is well short. Stapleton averaging 11 points per game. Second on the team. 81% free throw shooter. Misses them both short. Amponsa with a good check out on the shooter picks up the loose ball. And that's going to little things right there. They're always taught to box the shooter, and that time is example why you do it. Ramirez out front gets a screen from Lacey, and Thomas switches out on him. Lacey's got the smaller Hunter on him, trying to shape up in the right post. Hunter tries to front. Ramirez still looking inside, finds Lacey on the baseline, but well away from the basket. Spins to the middle, jumper's going to be short, and the ball is tipped out to Hunter. Hunter, two on three. Down the floor he goes. Gives it off to Reddick, and the teams will play five on five. Staple, uh, Thomas open three, left side, short, and Lacey grabs the ball. 
Thomas and Stapleton both shooting over 40% from downtown as Ramirez drives the other way, misses another layup. Roanoke's missed a basket of those, a bushel basket of them as Powell with the rebound throws it away. He and Thomas with a miscommunication and the turnover gives the ball back to Roanoke. Maroon still trailing by three and coming in for Bridgewater for the first time today is Josh Irwin, a 6'8 junior from Bridgeport, West Virginia. And Powell comes out. Inbound to Amponsa. Run up with a fresh 35. Eco being fronted in the post. They get him the ball. Foul called on Irwin. As the number one ranked team in the nation, the Duke University Blue Devils has just defeated uh, Wake Forest 80 to 62. Inbound to Eco, fumbles the pass away. They're trying to hit him right under the basket for a layup. And Ramirez's pass bounced at his shoe tops. Goes off the end line. Roanoke's eighth turnover of the game. We played the first three and a half minutes here in the second half, and Roanoke has yet to get a score on the board. Reddick backing Lacey down right to post. Goes to the baseline. Jump hook is over the top of everything. There's Leak Eco to clear. Ramirez pushing it the other way. He's one on four. Over to Amponsa. Bounce it down low for Lacey. Goes for the reverse layup, and Stapleton caps it from behind. Lacey gets the ball back out to Thacker. Thacker looks to drive. Goes to the rack. Wraparound pass. Intercepted, but he's fouled on his, on his way to the basket, and Stapleton has just picked up his third personal foul. Roanoke inbounds. Ramirez will drive the middle. Dump it over to Lacey. Ball's loose, tipped away. Here comes Reddick out to Thomas. Amponsaw back. Goes around Amponsaw for the layup. First field goal of the second half for either team. Second field goal of the, of the half, I should say. Thomas has four. And we have a blocking foul called against Thomas, against Amponsaw. Third team foul of the second half. Daniels and Smith going to come in for Roanoke. Thacker coming out, and let's see, Lacey will take a seat. I like bringing Daniels back in. He had the hot hand there in the first half. He gave him a lot of energy. Stapleton comes out with the three fouls, and Adams replaces him. As we mentioned, as Coach Moyer was talking about in the pregame interview we just played for you, very similar size players for Bridgewater. Amponsa, double clutch, baseline jumper is no good, but he's fouled. Let's see who Raymond Williams gives the foul to. That is Irwin picking up his second quick foul. So Amponsa goes back to the free throw line. Amponsa three for four from the line. Get into double figures if he makes this. In and out. Got stuck on 12 in the first half. It seems to be 33 here in the second half. McLean comes in for Irwin with the two fouls. He'll take a seat. Bosley back to the line. Flicks the wrist. Misses two in a row. Very rare. Shooting over 80% for the season from the line. Thomas has the rebound. Took it away from Smith. So Roanoke remains at 33. Bridgewater. As Adams drives Daniels' baseline, nice defense. Step back, jumper, no good. Ramirez tips the rebound out to Amponsa. He's three on two, goes right side to Daniels. Daniels all the way to the basket, makes the layup. Nice body control as Thomas went through underneath. And he was flying to the basket that time and was able to take enough off the shot. Laid up nice and easy. Reddick nearly has it taken away by Smith. He's going to drive him down the middle, get to the basket, and make the layup. No help coming over from the Maroons. And 13 points for Reddick. 40-35 Eagles. Imponsa driving right side against Thomas. Has the ball knocked away. Goes out of bounds. Roanoke will keep it. And surprise, there's a lot of contact there. No whistle, though. Well, I think it was an easy call because the ball went out of bounds off of Bridgewater. Keep possession. Quasi kind of got bailed out just a little bit. Zach Hunter comes in for Matthew Hunter. Run up right baseline to put it in play. Smith will take a three. Daniels keeps it alive. It's Thomas. Amponsaw has him for the Maroons. 
Zach Hunter on the right side, gets a ball screen, comes to the middle, Nico rotates over, they'll pull it out. Adams wants to drive Daniels, he does. Leaner in the lane, good. Eight for Adams, and, Adams and it's now a seven point game. It's a nice effort for him to get to the middle of the lane and <coughs> being a little bit taller was nice patience with the ball to go up and get that to go in. Roanoke unable to find the basket right now. They go. To, they try to go to Eco in the left post. The ball's kicked out of bounds. 18 on the shot clock. Roanoke in the second half is one for nine from the floor. Larson back into the game for the Eagles. McLean goes out, left baseline. They get it into Amplinsaw. Open jumper from 18 is short. Rebound controlled by Smith. His follows it up, no good. His shot off the rim. Rebounded by Reddick, and here's Hunter at the other end. Rono cannot buy a field goal. One of 10 in the second half. Hunter out top, bouncing into Reddick. Around Smith, puts it up and scores. Nice body control, ducked underneath, turned to the middle and scored. Reddick now with 15 points. He's got a man among boys inside at the moment. Maroon's now down by nine. They trail by as many as 11 in the second half. Backdoor cut by Daniels, and he is fouled on the way to the basket as he beat Adams backdoor. Nice pass from Smith. Get back to the line, and again, Runnock shoots eight to 10 in the first half, and now we're gonna have a break in the action. Media timeout. Timeout taken with 13.45 to play in the ball game as the Eagles are up by nine, 44 to 35. We're back in 30 seconds on ESPN Radio. Roanoke College, timeless and true. Smart and solid, practical and professional. Making discoveries about yesterday, creating visions for tomorrow. Lifted by a winning college spirit. Forging lifetime friendships with professors who prepare you for a place at the head of an operating table or another bright future. Roanoke College, classic for tomorrow. Looking for great food? Offense. And welcome back. Rick Seidel, Jerry Austin with you. 13.45 remaining in the ball game. 44-35 Bridgewater leads. The Eagles led at halftime 34-33. So they have had a 10-2 run to start this second half. And Jerry, Roanoke's had some open looks. They just haven't gotten anything to go. Right, so Bridgewater's getting you know, five of nine shooting to start the second half. And Roanoke, on the other hand, goes one for 11 in the second half. And and a lot of those are just point blank shots that, that they've taken to the basket and not been able to get to fall. And I think Bridgewater's done a better job here in the second half just executing in the half court offense. You know, it's a lot more movement. They've been able to get the ball into the interior of the lane. And, Adams has gone up for a couple shots, and you know, they've been able to kind of get the looks that they want and been able to convert just a little bit better. And Eco will take a seat, get a breather. They're bringing in Wendt. Daniels at the free throw line. Two shots coming. And Andrew converts. 79% from the line. He's now got 16 points to lead Roanoke. Makes them both. Roanoke needs to think about a stop here, Rick, and start chipping into this lead down 7, 44, 37. They're going to go back to the 2-3, which was very helpful in the first half. Adams in the far corner. Now Adams against Smith, right side. Out front they go, We're working it around the, to Reddick at the foul line against Smith. To Larson, left side, jumper, rims out. Rebound, Ramirez has Daniels ahead of him, gets it to Daniels' left side. Andrew down the floor, goes to the right side of the basket, misses the shot, gets his own rebound, in it goes to Smith, and he lays it home. So Daniels gets the assist on that, Smith gets his first basket, and now it's a five-point game, 44-39. Maroon's going to stay in the zone. Daniels has been the most impressive player on the floor this afternoon, in my opinion, on a lot of things. Reddick loses the ball inside. Smith helping with the deflection. 
Daniels now at the other end, goes to the right side and lays it home. Thomas thought he was going to put it up on the left and went for the ball and Daniels a little shoulder fake, then went around him under the basket and put it in off the right side. Brings the Maroons to within three and Donnie Burgess calls a 30 second timeout. I think the fact that he fumbled the ball in transition, Rick, kind of threw the defense off just a little bit and kind of forced him to go to the right side of the basket. So Runnick has now come back with a nice little 6-0 run of their own. Daniels with 19 matches his output against St. Mary's in the last ball game. It all started on the defensive end. I mean, he went into the zone and he got a couple nice, couple nice defensive plays and a nice box out the last time down the floor. And Andrew Daniels feeling it. Same team goes out there for Roanoke. Let's see for Bridgewater. Thomas Larson Hunter Wall now on the floor and McLean for the Eagles. Roanoke keeps Smith, Implensab, Ramirez, Daniels, and Went out there. Roanoke going to show some full court pressure. And it'll be just man pressure as Implensab will shadow Thomas across midcourt. Bridgewater right to left in the second half. Thomas out front. A little box set that time for the Eagles. A little cross action between the big guys and smalls. Hunter between the circles with 10 on the shot clock. He gets the ball screen right. Ramirez fights through. Hunter dumps it down underneath for Larson. Lays it up and in. How he got through the lane, I don't know, but it was a great play by Larson. He's got five. 46-41, Bridgewater. Imponsa off the catch, travels with the basketball. Tenth turnover for the Maroons. Timeout looks pretty good right now, doesn't it? Because Burgess took. Right. Kind of shifted the momentum a little bit. 12 minutes left in the ball game. 46-41 Eagles with the ball and the lead. Imponsa against Thomas right side. Wall out front. It's going to take a pull-up jumper. Hit it again. I don't know if he's hit the rim today. Making a nice stroke. And nothing but nylon. line. He's got 10 points. Uh, he missed a couple of threes, but uh, the baskets he's made have been pure. 48-41, down low for Smith. That's his shot blocked out of bounds, left side. I think that was Larson with the rejection. And Powell is going to come in. McLean out. Implantsaw with hands on hips. Throws in from the right side. Out to Daniels, gets a screen right. Eagle switch. Daniels has Powell on him, now they switch back. Wall out on Daniels. Ramirez with the ball, crosses over to lose Hunter. To Daniels, right side, three, long. Long rebound comes out to Hunter, one on three. Now four on three, and they'll still pull it back. Not gonna match man to man, it looks this time. Hunter against Ramirez. Trying to go inside, and they said it's out to Walt. It's a long three from the right side. That's way off. Rebound by Powell. Daniels blocks his shot out of bounds. Humphreys is going to come in, and Ramirez will go to the bench. Jaw hanging down. Julian tired. Thacker also going to come in. And Plinsa will get a blow. It's a critical time here. Maroons sit down quasi down seven with 10.57 to go. The uh, offensive foul that time, an illegal screen. Powell picks up the personal foul, his third. We saw that one time earlier in the game of Renwick being called for a similar violation. Amponsa got called for that one. Consistency. Humphreys now will handle things out front. Has Hunter on him. Eagles man to man. Daniels with the ball. Top of the key. Pull up jumper is going to be short on the three. Humphreys with the offensive rebound. Out to Thacker for a triple. That's no good. Rebound went in traffic. Gives it out to Smith. He'll jack one up. That's no good. And Roanoke just cannot find the bottom of the net. Three looks that time down the floor. and Places that these players can knock shots down from. Thomas against Thacker. Crosses him over. It goes left baseline. Thacker recovers. You just have to keep playing defense. You can't let the fact that the ball's not going in the basket, you have to defend. And 
Tom Daniels pokes it away and Bridgewater keeps possession. Inbounding in front of their own bench with 12 to shoot. Out to Hunter. Humphreys fighting through his screens. Now Thomas with five to shoot against Thacker. Pull up, long three, air ball. That'll go out of bounds to Roanoke. I don't know if Thacker didn't get a piece of that, but it was just that short. No, I think it was just that long a shot. He just missed it. Roanoke, three of 18 in the second half from the field. 48-41, they trail, under 10 minutes to play. Thacker gets a high screen left. Thomas fights through. Now it's Humphreys on the right side. He'll penetrate, kick it out. Daniels, three is no good, but we have an offensive foul called against Humphreys, who was out of control in the air. Picks up his second personal foul. And Lacey will come in for Smith. And Ethan knew exactly where he wanted to go with that ball. I mean, it was way away from the action. He just drove in just a little bit too deep. Reddick now back in. And Larson out. One of top two scorers sitting on the bench. Wall, right side three. That one's short. Rebound went. Good fight against McLean there. Here's Humphreys into the offensive zone. Roanoke still trailing by seven. The Maroons have scored just eight points in 11 minutes in the second half. Daniels out top. going to drive. Nice help from Matthew Hunter. He's checked back in. They can't get the penetration. Down low to Went. Drives. Reverse layup. Won't go. Tip from Lacey. Not there. Ball goes out of bounds to the Maroons off of McLean. Wade Lacey doing a good job keeping the ball alive for the Maroons. Ethan's really good off of these inbounds. You know Lacey can make that shot from beyond the arc. He's just not able to free himself up enough. Thacker drives, foul line out to Humphreys. Shot clock at 20, plenty of time. Went right side, double teamed in the post. And foul called as he rips the ball between the double team. Seventh team foul, so Lonick will be in the bonus for the remainder of the game. Only two team fouls themselves. So went to the free throw line for the one and one, barely gets to the rim and rebounded easily by Bridgewater. So we're not, not helping their cause that time. Last foul was charged to McLean, that's his second. McLean will take a jumper from the top of the key and rattle it in just inside the arc. He's, He's mad, got four. Mad they called the foul on him last time. Bridgewater matches their largest lead in the second half at nine. Over to Daniels, down low for Lacey, left side, quickly double team, comes to the middle, tries to shovel it underneath for Went. Trouble handling the pass, intercepted by Thomas. And Maroon's back on defense. Wall, right corner, jumper's gonna be an air ball. And rebounded by Thacker. Nico and Amponsa have been on the bench a long time. Thacker open for three, right side, no. Daniels keeps it alive and then collects the loose ball. What a nice game he's playing today here this afternoon, Rick. They go to Went at the foul line, back out to Daniels. Between the rings. Now they try to find Went and Humphreys throws it away. Bad pass. Thomas with the intercept coming the other direction. Hunter drops it for Reddick, lays it home. Reddick with 17 points on the game. And now it's 11 point lead matching the largest of the game, 52-41. Thacker drives the other end, misses an open layup. Ball is tipped out to Lacey in the far corner. And we have a timeout called. Player down on the other end of the floor, number 34. Waugh is down on the floor. I can hurt himself, the officials let that play on for a while. Runnock had the advantage and then when play kind of stalled a little bit. Runnock had to go attend to the down eagle. Wall has been big today. He's got 10 points, including a couple of threes. Hopefully nothing serious, but he is, appears to be in some pain. Bridgewater had a lot of injuries last year they had to fight through, as you heard in our pregame interview. Been relatively healthy. 
Right now they're battling a bit of a flu bug going through the team. And one player with a couple of, who broke his hand earlier, a couple of broken bones, a couple in his fingers. And right now with Wall down on the floor, we'll just take this 30-second break and be back. 52-41, Eagles, 7.08 to play in the game. We're back in a moment on ESPN Radio. And welcome back. Rick Seidel, Jerry Austin with you as Wall is able to come off under his own power. Looks like a leg injury. We'll see. And they'll put in number 22, Cordero Thompson, for the first time today to replace him. Roanoke told it within three, Jerry, at the 12-minute mark. Donnie Burgess called the timeout, and it's been an 8-0 run since that point. Yeah, we've seen a game of runs today, and Roanoke's going to have to get back. It's just bucket at a time. They're going to continue to work on the defensive end of the floor and maybe get a basket or two in transition. Akers now on the floor. Gives the inbounds to Humphreys. Eagles playing man. And Fonsal back on the floor. Has it out front against Thomas. Over to Akers. Rona dribbling one way, reversing the ball. Here's Humphreys. At the foul line, can't find anybody. Steps back. Now spin dribble. Finds Lacey underneath. Ball deflected by Reddick. And it goes out of bounds to the Maroons. Timeout called. Yes, timeout on the floor. 52-41 hour score. Bridgewater on top. Roanoke with the basketball. 640 remaining in the game. We're back in 30 on ESPN Radio. Mac and Bob's opened for business in 1980. Over the years, we've grown from 10 stools to a full-service restaurant that seats 330 people. Now we invite you to come try our new breakfast menu featuring sweet potato pancakes, eggs benedict, omelets made to order, stuffed French toast, homemade sausage and gravy biscuits, and much more. Open for breakfast Monday through Saturday at 8 a.m. Sunday brunch, 10 a.m. till 2. See you for breakfast at Mac and Bob's in Salem. Not till 4. 4.30. And we're back. Rick Seidel, Jerry Austin with you. I want to thank our producer, Ashley Stammerhorn, once again for taking care of things back at the station for us. As the Maroons are still looking for win number one in ODAC play, they are 0-3, Bridgewater at 1-2. Both teams are 7-5 overall on the year. It's conference play the rest of the way. And always a battle in the ODAC, one of the top, maybe the top conference in Division Three basketball in the country. And maybe a little bit of a surprise that Randolph is 3-0 and to start the, start the season in, in ODAC play. I guess it all depends on the matchups. Now, Clay Nunn has done a phenomenal job getting that program started. Hampton and Sydney again. Really strong start along with Wesleyan, all undefeated. Humphreys left baseline, trying to get it inbounds. Finds Akers right side, catch, shoot, and score from 15. Roanoke is finally off the 41. Akers first basket, 52-43, six and a half to play. Daniels out right now, Lacey on. Reddick wants it right block. He can't find him. Hunter drive, kick it back out front. And working the clock, shot clock quite a bit here. As Akers knocks it loose, Thomas recovers in backcourt. He'll push it ahead. Went helps. Thomas out of control. Went saves it inbounds, and it is Impasa grabbing the ball, but being stepping on the baseline. One second on the shot clock. Let's see if they reset I, it. I don't think it. I don't think it was a possession. I mean, he. They're going to talk about it. Coach Moyer yelling, no lobs, no lobs. Thomas to inbound. They did not reset the shot clock. Adams lets it fly. 
and they're going to say shot clock violation. Raymond Williams says you cannot catch, turn, and shoot and get it off in time. So Eco comes in for Wendt for the Maroons, and Roanoke will have the basketball over the off the turnover. Ten turnovers for the Eagles, 13 for the Maroons. Roanoke shooting just 31% on the game. Now back to the zone for the Eagles. We saw this in the first half. And Roanoke got some shots from beyond the arc. And Pansa takes one of those from beyond the arc. Short on the three, but he gets clobbered. He'll go to the line. And I believe that was Thompson that hit him. Let's see what Shane Scott says. 12 or 22, he's trying to decide. They're going to give it to Hunter, number 12, his first. That came really close to being a four-point play there. Yep, that ball was right on line, wasn't it? It was on line, even with the contact. And Ponsa missed his last two free throws, has not scored in the second half, has nine points on the game. 13 points the last time these two teams hooked up up at Nininger Hall. Quasi swishes the first one. It's nothing like getting rhythm back at the free throw line either. It, sometimes that's all it takes is just to see it go through the basket one time. Makes them the first two. McLean comes in for Thompson. Ramirez in for Humphreys. Has a wrist tape now. I don't know if that may have been a little bleeding they just had to get rid of or uh, hurt himself. And Amponsa cans all three free throws. So give him 12 points on the game. We're going to apply some trapping in backcourt. Knock the ball loose. And it goes out of bounds off of Amponsa. Maroons almost came up with the steal there. Akers did a nice job tipping that. 32 seconds. They used up three seconds. They got seven seconds to get it across the. Trapping Thomas in the corner. Throws it across to Hunter, and they'll defeat the Maroons' pressure. Roanoke in the 2 3 zone now. McLean flashing to the foul line for Bridgewater. Bridgewater again taking a lot of time off the clock. You wonder if they've gotten out of their offensive rhythm just a little bit. Nearly losing the ball is Hunter. Six to shoot, and we have a timeout called by Donnie Burgess with five seconds remaining on the shot clock. And this is going to be a 30-second timeout. I don't know if they had any 30s left. So that's two possessions in a row. I don't right think they do. That's a full timeout. It is a full timeout. Always trust your scorebook. 5-12 remaining in the game, 52-46, Bridgewater with the lead, but only five seconds on the shot clock in this possession when we come back on ESPN Radio. Something I discovered to myself is that if I have a goal, then I can accomplish it. The well-rounded experience. At a Division three school, you primarily a student athlete, so the school is really shaped around you developing yourself Brands as a complete individual. Right, move the Short it steps helps a lot left foot shot, score! a family with your team that can guide you. And back at the Bass Center, Rick Seidel, Jerry Austin with you as the Eagles lead the Maroons by six, 52-46. They were up by one at the half, 34-33 after leading by as many as 11 in the first half. And Roanoke having fallen behind by nine here in the second half. And I think the zone has you know, been very effective for the Maroons. They've been able to, and I think, you know, part of that too is Bridgewater's willingness to take some time off the clock. Now they've got it inbounded right at the hash on the sideline with only five seconds to play. You'll see if they drew up some kind of play in the huddle. I'm sure Coach Burgess did that. Adams to throw in in front of the Bridgewater bench. Into Thomas near midcourt. Thomas back to Adams. Launches a three over Imponsa. Short. Rebound loose. And picked up by Eco and Ramir uh, Eco and Akers, who takes it away from the big center. Ramirez driving right side. Back to Imponsa on the wing. They're going to call an offensive foul. They're going to say Quasi pushed off on Adams. And I, don't, I don't totally disagree with that call. I mean, Paige Moyer's upset. It could have gone either way, but Quasi created just a little bit of space with that chicken arm. 
That's his second foul. Second time he's been called for that in the game. That's a big, big turnover right there for the Maroons. Six point game in the middle. Reddick loses the handle on the pass, gets it back. Pop it out top. Again, Bridgewater content to take their time here. Hunter over on the far side. Ramirez giving him room. Now Thomas left wing, gonna penetrate, kick it back out. Hunter will take a three over Ramirez, that's long and left. Rebound loose, and we've got a jump ball called. Eco and Thomas, and Thomas still pulling. Nobody willing to let go of the basketball. I think Leonard gets the ball now. Arrow favors the Maroons. There were three red jerseys in there for that offensive rebound, Jerry. And Eco <laughs> tied him up. Ampensaw driving right baseline to the rack. Misses the open layup. Ball's loose. Akers got it back. Turnaround jumper is well short. Gets his own rebound. And foul called on the rebound. It will be Roanoke basketball as they will give the foul to Reddick. Just his second. But it will be a shooting foul. Yeah, I, don't, I can't remember a game when I've seen as many missed shots right around the basket. Now Akers is going to have to earn them from the line. Akers, five of seven for the year, 71% from the strike. Two points in this game. Misses the front end of the one and one. Ridge, Bridgewater rebounds. Roanoke back, going to sit in the zone again. Still down by six. We approach four minutes left in the game. Roanoke starting to cheat a little bit on the zone. Here's Reddick driving, dishing. Stapleton back in. Loses the ball. Throws it over to Adams, right side for a 15-footer. Spins it in from the baseline. That's a big basket right there for the Eagles. Puts them back up eight. 12 for Adams. Roanoke shot no good in the middle. I think that was Ramirez. Now Amponsai out front off the Daniels offensive board. He's short on the three. Ball goes out of bounds. It'll be Roanoke ball. It's Eco and Akers fighting over the top from behind of Stapleton and McLean. Lucky they didn't get called for an offensive foul or rebounding foul over the back. Run up down six last time, missed the layup, and it's in the front end of a one and one. They could have cut it to four. And the penalty that time is Bridgewater goes down and makes the basket, and now you're fighting from eight points down. Ramirez lobs into Eco. Eco spins to the middle, misses the layup, gets his own rebound, puts it back up. This time it goes in. Eco's first basket in the second half. He's got ten. Lead is back to six, 322 and counting. Run up showing some full court pressure. Bridgewater beats it over the top. Two on one. Thomas going to step it back out. Really Had good. Adams on the left side. Really good hustle that time for Amponsa. Get him back. Wealthy on the floor now, handling out top. Gives to Thomas. Shot clock down to 15. Roanoke staying in the zone. Adams out front. Adams to the middle. Shump, shot up and no good. Rebound. And ball's knocked out of bounds to the Eagles as Ramirez hits the deck hard. Good defensive sequence by the Maroons, but they're not finishing it by collecting the loose ball. Under three minutes to play. Damon Williams having some conversations with the players. And In it comes. Wealthy. Pull up jumper off the jump, off the bounce. No good. And a rebound by Larson. Intercepted by. Daniels, Daniels coming down the floor, going to go to the rack, reverse layup, won't go, but he's fouled. Two Bridgewater players on the deck. That time, he did the opposite, did, Daniels did of what he's done earlier in the game, which is to go from the left side to the right. This time he went from the right side across the basket to the left and tried, tried little, to reverse layup. A little English on it that time. And now a chance with this clock stopped to bring the Maroons within four. And he can't do it. Roanoke just cannot get anything to go in right now. He shot eight for 10 from the line in the first half. And shooting just 13 of 19 now. And Daniels swishes the second one. 20 points for him on the game. That's one shy of his career high set against Averitt. Wow, as the Maroons almost create a turnover in backcourt on pressure. Welty out front. He's going to drive the middle. Kick it back to Reddick. Roanoke now scrambling on defense. Wealthy lines up a three, short. Rebound Ramirez in front of Thomas. Five point game, 2.20 to go. He puts a wide open top of the key, three, long. Ball's on the ground, pick up by Ramirez. 
His pass knocked away and picked up by Wealthy. Three on two the other way. Wealthy underneath for Reddick against Amponsad. Lays it up in and the foul. And that right there could have been in play of the game, Rick. Run out and scrambling and just a wild action on both ends of the floor. Amponsa with that three could have cut that lead to two. Instead, it's now seven and possibly eight. Quasi with his third foul. 14 fouls against the Maroons, 10 against the Eagles, as Reddick helps out by missing the free throw. 7.3 possession game with, 20, uh, with two minutes to play. Akers will drive left, in trouble, out to Eco, top of the key. Hand to Amponsa. 150 to play, 20 to shoot. Amponsaw goes to the rack and is fouled on his way to the hole. He'll get two. And Thomas picks up his third foul. There's only 14 fouls. Now Runnock's got to figure out. That's 10 team fouls. I mean, for Runnock, they only have four. Yeah. So in order to get Bridgewater into a one and one, they give a couple fouls here quick. Amponsaw back to the free throw line, made his last three. Makes that one also. 13 for Quasi. Smith comes in for Akers. And Zach Hunter going to come in for Welty. And that's 5 of 23 shooting here in the second half. It's into this hole. And it'll be a two possession game regardless of the free throw. This free throw is short. Smith keeps it alive, but Thomas controls. And then Thomas loses the ball out of bounds. Let's see who they give it to. They're gonna say it was off Smith's knee. Crowd doesn't like the call, but I think it's correct. Run it trying to maybe almost give a foul that time. Spot throw in. Timeout, Coach Burgess. Timeout taken with 1.45 remaining. His team up 56-50. With possession of the ball, we're back in 30 seconds on ESPN Radio. Roanoke College. Timeless and true. Smart and solid. Practical and professional. Making discoveries about yesterday. Creating visions for tomorrow. Lifted by a winning college spirit. Forging lifetime friendships with professors who prepare you for a place at the head of an operating table or another bright future. Roanoke College, classic for tomorrow. Welcome back to the Bass Center. Rick Seidel, Jerry Austin with you. 56 to 50, Roanoke trails Bridgewater with 1.45 to go in the ball game. A two possession game, Bridgewater with the basketball. And as Jerry you pointed out, 14 fouls against Roanoke. So if they're gonna put Bridgewater on the line, they're gonna have to give some fouls quickly here. Bridgewater for the year, as Coach Burgess mentioned in our pregame show, not shooting the ball exceptionally well, 68% from the line. And we'll check the free throw prowess of those who come out. Thomas shoots 79%. He's out there. Stapleton is still on the bench, their best free throw shooter. Matthew Hunter only at 55%. Zach Hunter at 63%. And it's Zach that's out there with the ball right, or Matthew out there with the ball right now. Reddick gives it up. And Hunter nearly has it picked by Smith, who picks up the personal foul instead. That's his third, fifth on the team. So Roanoke still another foul to give before we're in the one and one. About 12 seconds burn off the clock there before they gave that foul. Trying to see if they could come up with the turnover. Reddick, a 68% free throw shooter, puts it in play. And we've got a foul called. They're going to call Quasi for the hold. That's going to be Imponsa's fourth foul now. As before the ball was thrown in, he grabbed Thomas. Thomas with the ball off the inbounds, brings it across midcourt. They're just going to run some clock now. They're going to play. Runner's going to play one possession to see if they can get it to within three. Thomas, turnaround jumper against Amponsa, rims out, rebound, Eco. Here comes Ramirez looking to push. Bridgewater back on D. No advantage. Ramirez going to drive left side, kick to Smith. Won't take the shot. Out to Amponsa against Thomas. He'll drive. 
and go to the basket. And there's going to be a offensive foul called. Shane Scott with the whistle. That's yep. And that'll be it. For That's going to be it. And Fonsa will foul out, dribbling into traffic there, starting from the top of the key. Each Eagles rotation right there to draw the charge. I'm not, I didn't catch the number as there were three red shirts in front of him. Who gets credit for drawing the charge? Thacker will come in to replace him. Coach Moyer bringing in a three-point shooter. Score of local interest. <coughs> Maryland beats Virginia Tech 94-71. They go for the home run down the floor to Hunter. Thacker hacks him immediately. And that will be a one and one. Matthew Hunter, 55% from the line for the year. 103 to play. A nice pass and catch. Nicely executed by the Eagles. Aker's going to come in for Roanoke and get Smith. So Coach Moyer again putting more shooters out on the floor. Akers had two second half threes in the win against Peace. Free throw rims in. So Hunter makes it a three possession ball game. Second opportunity it is good. So now it's an eight-point game with 103 to go. Ramirez will bring it across the timeline. And he fakes the three, dribble drive, nothing there. Out to Daniels. He'll penetrate. Give to Ego in the post. Ego muscles it up and scores left of the basket. And Coach Moyer calls timeout. Daniel now with 12 points in the ball game. Six point game with 56, or 50.4 seconds remaining in the game. It's a 30 second timeout, so we will stay right here. So again, it is a two possession game. I mean, <coughs> Brunner's going to try to come up with a quick steal. Really, I don't think they have the luxury at this point to play defense for 35 seconds to see if they can get a missed shot, although Bridgewater put it up pretty quick the last time down. It only took about 10 seconds off, but I guess they're anticipating the foul. I think Runnick at this point is probably trying to figure out who do we foul, who's on the floor. The Maroons put Ramirez, Thacker, Barrett, Daniels, and Eco on the floor. Reddick will throw in bounds with Thomas, Matthew Hunter, McLean, and I believe that's Adams. Yes, it's Adams. Running the baseline, Reddick gets it in, and Ramirez quickly fouls Hunter. It's a guy you want on the line, shooting under 60%, but he did make his last two. 19th foul against Roanoke, so double bonus the rest of the way for, for Bridgewater. So here's the opportunity to see you. Hunter will miss the front end, and Rono can get back one of those possessions. Down by six. Akers will come in for Smith and Thacker in for Barrett as Coach Moyer doing some offense-defense substitutions. Hunter flicks the wrist. Swish. Three-possession game. That could be the big nail right there. Well, they're not providing any relief for the Maroons. Softing it away. He makes both free throws without touching the rim. Back to an eight-point game with 49 seconds to go. McLean comes out. Larson comes back in. I'll try to find Daniels, I think, for a three here. Ramirez over to Akers. He'll launch from downtown. It's short. Eco keeps the rebound alive. Bridgewater controls, and that should do it. 37 seconds to go. Roanoke trying to foul Thomas in backcourt. Finally, they do. 34.9 ticks to go. Makes both of these a four-possession game. So Roanoke. Roanoke takes a full timeout. We'll take the break also. 60-52, Bridgewater with the advantage and two free throws coming with 35 seconds remaining. We're back in 30 seconds on ESPN Radio. 
Looking for great food and the big game in high def? Try the new menu items at All Sports Cafe, including thick and juicy burgers grilled to perfection, served with fries and your choice of any side item. All Sports Cafe, where the object is to score great food. Looking for great food and the big game in high def? Try the new menu items at All Sports Cafe. You'll love our award-winning wings. Grill the perfection with your choice of sauce. Only at All Sports Cafe, Roanoke and Salem, where the object is to score great food. I did receive an honor. And is a bit chilly outside here in January in the Roanoke Valley, and it has been cool, if not frigid, here in the second half if you're a Roanoke fan. The Maroons have made just six field goals in, what, 30 attempts? 31 attempts. 31 six, attempts in the six second of half. 31 in the second half, and they've turned the ball over nine times on top of that. Just not a formula for victory. And Bridgewater has made 11 field goals in the second half. And they have the basketball on the baseline. Oh, they just called that ball out of bounds. They must not have called a foul. And there's the there's a traveling violation against Adams as he was double teamed at midcourt. 27 and a half seconds to go. Roanoke with the basketball. I thought they had called a foul on that last play. They just called the ball out of bounds. Thomas got knocked backwards. Maroons basketball. Ramirez, right side for Daniels against Thomas. He'll drive the middle. Go to the basket. Won't get the shot. Draws the foul, though, on Larson. Chance to cut into the lead with the clock stop. So Daniels returns to the line to match his career high with this free throw. And this one hits the front edge but curls over and drops in. So in three consecutive games, Rick, <coughs> Stocker with Eco and now with Daniels, three different players with career highs. And he spins in the second free throw. Now a six point two possession ball game as Reddick runs the baseline. They trap Thomas in the corner. Gets it ahead to Stapleton. Now it's up front to Larson who'll be ahead of everyone and throw it down with authority. Bruno quickly pushing the other way down 62-54. Daniels three is good from the left side. He adds to his career high. And then 25 points. That kid's doing everything he can today to keep the Maroons in it. He's He's played a whale of a ball game. Nine seconds to go, 62 to 57. Bridgewater with the lead. Timeout on the floor. We're back in 30 on ESPN Radio. I did receive a non-athletic scholarship upon entering uh, school. I got the presidential scholarship, which was huge for me. And back at the Bass Center, 62-57, Bridgewater on top of Roanoke. Andrew Daniels has been the bright spot for the Maroons in this ballgame, shooting 9 of 15 from the floor, 2 of 5 from three-point range, 5 of 6 from the line. He's got five rebounds. Four of those have been offensive boards, a couple of assists, 25 points, a career high. Besting his career high set against Averitt of 21. Daniels, Ramirez, Barrett, Humphreys, and Smith out there for Roanoke. This group is going to foul immediately. Reddick will put the ball in play. They're not going to guard the inbounder. Smith is coming over to help the person cutting. They get the ball back to Reddick ahead of the floor, ahead of the field to Larson, and he will go in for another uncontested dunk. Three seconds to play. And that's it. Ball game. Final score, 64-57.
Bridgewater defeats Roanoke College. And the Maroons fall to 7-6 and six on the year. They are now 0-4 in ODAC play. Bridgewater improves to 8-5 and 2-2. And two and two. Right now, we're going to take this timeout. We'll be back with postgame. You're listening to Roanoke College Basketball on the Maroons Radio Network. <laughs> 